And after 40 years of the Republican Party as being effectively marginalized by pop culture and the media as not being sufficiently oriented towards minority communities, and the Republican Party accepting that premise and not willing to walk into minority communities, into the Hispanic community and go, hey, guess what? You know that thing called Judeo-Christianity? We share that in common. Same with the black community. But the cowards in the Republican Party know how to get elected without having to tap dance on the third rail of politics, which is race. So they're not willing to go there, and they're a bunch of cowards. And so when the Tea Party starts to emerge, and I, Mr. Politically Correct, former liberal secular Jew from Brentwood, starts going to the Tea Party, I noticed two things. Two things. And the gender studies professors in the house are going to love what I have to say. <laughs> the Tea Party is run by women. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to hear this. This speech is for you. I want you to hear it. I do. Because we're going to have a hug <laughs> afterwards. And I want you to know I brought campus footwear here. Hippie shoes. I brought hippie shoes to show that I am one on the campus. I have a hacky sack in my back of my car. I have the sticks and I'm willing to participate in a drum circle. <laughs> That's what I came here in a kumbaya moment. <laughs> the Tea Party is run by women, period. And I'm absent-minded. If anybody was at the event earlier, I started to give my speech. I didn't realize that my speech was in here, even though I was told that that wasn't my speech, but I was just <laughs> And I'm just barely minimally observant. I'm like Holly Golightly with a gut. And I go to these events and I keep getting picked up by these ladies. And I'm like, who are you? He goes, I'm the one that organized you being here. I'm the one who took care of your itinerary. I'm the one who put you number three after so-and-so, 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 and so-and-so. I'm like, you're really organized. I'd love to hire you if I had money. Uh, and one event after the other, I started to realize every single time I got picked up by a woman who was leading the charge, who knew more about what was going on in politics in that town than anything that I'd ever imagined. This person was like the mayor and the editor of the newspaper uh, wrapped into one. And it was compelling. So I noticed one thing, diversity, women, Oppressor oppressed. All right, Virginia Slims were, you know. <laughs> what's the phrase on Virginia Slims? You've come, come a long way, baby. That's right. The Tea Party led by women. Janine Garofalo should come down to one and realize that you don't bite. Well, with you, maybe we will. <laughs> and the second thing that I noticed at these tea parties, and again, I'm minimally observant. Uh, well, I didn't, let me parenthetically state something that deserves, within that parenthesis, an exclamation point. And you can do that. I, I did. I do understand English to a certain degree. The reason why women are leading the, the Tea Party, and the, the, it, it's because political correctness in this country, cultural Marxism is what it is, oppressor oppressed instead of the haves versus the have-nots, pitting people against each other, male versus female, Hispanic against white, black against white, black against Hispanic. Fun times. Fun times out there. The reason why is because men are eunuchs in our country. They're, they're, they're portrayed in eunuchs in liberal Hollywood. And, you know, you've got the strong sitcom mother that can do anything and can 
you know, do the Boy Scout knot, and the men are ineffectual and effective. We've, we've castrated men in our culture, and the women are saying to hell with it. If you're not going to get up and save this country, we're going to do it. And it's an interesting thing, because di apparently diversity is a double-edged sword, because it's strange that the feminist movement was based upon it being a left of center movement. But right now, there is no left of center feminist movement out there. Gloria Steinem is in the ash heap of history. And the dominant strain out there is people like Sarah Palin and Michelle Bachman. Who scare the living daylights. Who scare the living daylights out of the Andrea Dworkins of the world. Whose ideas are in the ash heap of history. They don't work. Even the girls and the gal, oh, I'm sorry, the women, I'm sorry, I, I should get zapped for that, right? Uh, by mistake, boys, did that neutralize it? The women who embraced it eventually realized, what was I thinking, and have started to have children again, saying, why am I trying to, I'm, I'll get on a side thing. The second thing I noticed, beside the fact that women were leading the Tea Party movement, is it's not why is the Tea Party movement alive and kicking? Is it because the guy who dressed up as Benjamin Franklin was there yet again? <laughs> or dressed as Paul Revere yet again in the middle of the summer? I'm glad that they do it. It's cute. And it brings it down to the foundation and the document. It's fantastic. The reason why the Tea Party has an energy level that's caused probably many people in the room to be here today who wouldn't have been here three years ago. Right? Yes. It's because it's an existential movement. It goes beyond taxes. It goes beyond the Constitution. It goes beyond the survival of this country as a concept, as, as an idea. And I believe this to the core of my being. It goes beyond diversity. If diversity means the pitting against Americans, against one another, we're going to lose. If we don't get back to the constitutional construct, the idea of e pluribus unum, where people come here and become one, this country will die. And what I have seen, the second phenomenon that matters more than you can possibly know it, and we have to cultivate it, it is our obligation to cultivate it, and that is that the most powerful speakers, and I know this, I've been to them, and they're not invited necessarily at first by the Tea Party organizer who picked me up because she didn't even know that this person existed. And the person who shows up there and electrifies the crowd every single time is the black or Hispanic conservative. Yes. Yes. And says, do not stand down. Don't let them scare you. We need to bond together. And so when I went to Dallas and I sat in the front row and watched myself give that speech, I told these people the mainstream media, the institutional left, by that I mean Center for American Progress, Media Matters, The Huffington Post, The Daily Kos. They tried to dissuade you from aggregating. They tried to make it as painful as humanly possible to join a people's movement, a ground up people's movement, to take the country back from fiscal insanity, a move away from American sovereignty, a move away from our foundational principles, we are finally realizing that they can't beat us. And that if we go into the next election cycle with that battling spirit where we get petty and it's about Janine Garofalo, or we, or we turn the channel to Keith Olbermann, channel 743 on the correct TV, uh, to the, we've got the government subsidized no tax paid MSNBC, and then we've got the Gore Channel, where Keith Olbermann spends every single day making sure that he not interview one of you. 
Because if he does, he'll find out that you're not the monster that he says you are. And they need him. The Democratic Party needs him. Because what's happened over the last three election cycles since you decided to stand up? Scott Brown in 2009. What happened last year in November? And I'm going to take a pre curtsy. What happened on Tuesday night with Ann? in panic mode, and I quote not me, but James Carville today on CNN. Because the only trick in the book that they have is throwing the construct of diversity in your face and saying, the proof is in the pudding. The black community doesn't vote for you, therefore, you're racist. <laughs> Democratic Party should all be in jail for what they've done to the black community. Yeah. Sue me. The track record of what they've done with social experimentation by saying Judeo-Christianity doesn't work. We're going to put, the government's going to go in there and we're going to be in charge. You've destroyed the black family. And you've made them dependent. And I told them, the Republican Party are cowards. For the last 40 years, the media said, don't go over there and don't talk to them. If we do not reach out to those with whom we have disagreement, if we cannot find common ground, like I have found with Lee Stranahan, who writes for my side and can't believe that Breitbart isn't evil, that I don't bite, that I'm lighthearted 99% of the time unless I'm being called a racist, and I'm sorry if I snarl, but I'm not a racist. In the